Well, good morning, students, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on wherever you are. I hope that everybody are doing well today. Uh, as promised, uh, we are going to talk about the uh, APA format um, for writing for our academic writing class. Um, so on Friday, not Friday, on Thursday, when we meet in class, we are going to do something else. We are going to put everything into practice. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, I have prepared uh, some PowerPoint slides for us. Let me share my screen. I think the internet is not, it's not really cooperating today. So, but I hope um, we are going to be able to cover the discussion. So as you see, I have uploaded the um, slides to our Google Drive, so you can access them um, from there um, if you need them. Uh, so uh, this is the slide and I'm going to do the slideshow from the start. So by the way, you need to, it's going to be a long discussion. So I have um, 40, around 40 slides in total, but we are not going to um, discuss every single slide. We are going to skip some, um, especially when it, it is related to you know, the application um, or, um, you know, some examples of paper. We're just going to skim it and skip some slides. I know this class looks weird, but this is iced coffee. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so what is APA format? Um, you have heard, you know, from around you uh, on campus, um, everywhere about this uh, particular format. So APA format is the American Psychological Association, the citation style, uh, which is the most commonly used format for manuscripts in the social sciences. So APA provides regulations on stylistics, in-text citation, and references. APA suggests the use of first person pronouns. So instead of using the author or the writer, you, you saw these examples in you know, a lot of papers that you read, right? So they use the author or the writer, but um, APA suggests using um, first person pronouns. And then regarding the uh, voice, APA suggests both active voice and passive voice, depending on where you are going to use it. So active voice is used when stressing the actions of research. So when you talk about what you did in your research, for example, we assigned the participants questionnaires or survey, and then passive voice is when you use it for the participants or the subjects or the recipients or the objects of action. For example, the survey or the questionnaire was unclear um, about the language. I have to move my picture, you know, all over the place because sometimes it blocks the uh, words. The language for the APA papers, it needs to be clear, meaning it needs to be specific in descriptions and explanations. I need to be concise, uh, condensed. You just need to write the informations that you really need to present over there in your paper, okay? And then the last one, use plain language, meaning that you need to use simple descriptive adjectives and minimize the use of figurative language that you usually use it for the creative writing. So for the APA papers, you're not going to use the metaphorical language or something like that, okay? So probably your lecturer assigns you to write these type of uh, papers. So these are the type of papers that students usually submit for their 
um, assignment. So these are the types of papers that students submit uh, for their project. First, it can be quantitative research papers uh, where you report a quantitative research display empirical or numerical uh, information. Uh, so um, usually in numbers uh, and then usually also using statistical method. Uh, so this paper consists of title page, abstract, introduction, method, results, and discussion. The next paper that students usually write for their project will be the qualitative research papers. So these papers report qualitative research, uh, which use scientific practices to learn more about human experiences that cannot be numerically displayed or quantified. So these type of papers, uh, they don't use numbers, okay? The paper consists of a title page, abstract, introduction, method, uh, findings or results in discussion. Alrighty, uh, the next type of paper that students usually submit for their final project is going to be uh, the literature review. So when you write this particular paper, you summarize scientific literatures on a particular research topic. Uh, so while the APA publication manual does not require a specific order for literature review, a good literature review usually contains an introduction, thesis statement, summary, and list of references. So when you are assigned uh, papers outside uh, this group, you need to consult your lecturer or your advisor um, regarding the requirements, okay? And then there is another one, another type of paper that professionals usually write, um, usually for publication. The authors need to consult the publication manual for manuscripts preparation. Usually it will be provided by the journals or, you know, or if you prepare a book chapter, for example, then it is going to be prepared by the uh, editor. Now we're going to talk about the format, right? Um, you need to remember that it is going to be typed. You're, you're not going to handwrite your paper. Make sure that it is double spaced. Uh, use 10 to 12 uh, size of font. So the size is going to be between 10 to 12, but I would prefer 12 because it will be easier to read. Um, and then the standard font is going to be Times New Roman, but there are other options. Um, again, you need to consult your um, uh, advisor or your lecturer or the uh, manuals, okay? and use the standard margins. Um, you are going to be able to navigate it when you write the papers in you know, the Microsoft Words. And the paper should be printed on the standard sized paper. Again, you need to ask your um, advisor and your lecturer about this um, particular requirement. Um, moving on, still the APA format. Um, you need to make sure that your paper has the following sections. So the title page, the abstract, the main body, and finally the references. You need to make sure that you have all of those four, okay? Um, then next, every page of your paper should include the page number in the upper right. You need to make sure that you insert the page number in the upper right position. If it is a professional paper, so for example, you're submitting a manuscript uh, for a publication in a journal, you need to insert a page header. So it is the short version of your title, all written in um, capital letters. Uh, in the upper left hand corner. So student papers, according to the uh, APA manual seventh edition, 
uh, do not require running headers anymore. Yay. You're happy, right? It's not it's not complicated anymore. Um, so well, the APA seventh edition. Previously, we used the sixth edition. I have to move my video here and there because <laughs> it's blocking the words. So the APA seven has slightly different formatting rules for professional and student papers. So you know that professional papers are those a directive for publication, right? And then student papers are you know, papers that you submit for um, project assignments for your classes. Uh, most of these differences extend to the title page and running header, so they don't have it anymore for the student uh, papers. Oops. Okay, too fast. Sorry about that. Um, so this is how the title page looks like for the student paper. So you have the page header. You're going to insert the header and then write the, uh, the page over there. Um, page one. So this is for the title. Uh, student papers contain no running head. Simply insert a page number plus right. Okay, so there's no running head. Uh, for the title, uh, it's going to be centered uh, with your name, no title or degree, okay, the academic department, the course, the instructor, and then the date when you submit the essay. And then the title page for the professional paper, this is one for publication. Okay, but you can see the page over there, right? So it is exactly the same except for the header. So for the professional paper, <clears throat> you need to include, you need to insert the header. And then the title, it's going to be centered. So for example, there are two authors in here. A green no title. And then the evaluation, uh, the, you know, for example, the, the office, the name of the office or the workplace, okay, the department, um, and usually the university, because usually, school, uh, you know, authors or scholars are from, you know, uh, the educational institution. Uh, and then for the author note, usually when you write a paper when you're a student, then you are going to be, um, collaborating with your advisor or your lecturer, right? So um, I'm pretty sure that your lecture is going to have this, uh, which is called the ORCID uh, code, okay? Including the ORCID, not code, uh, identification. So you are going to include the ORCID identification or in this case, the link to ORCID um, and then evaluation uh, and any special disclosures related to, for example, if there is uh, like a financial, no financial uh, interest, conflict of interest, and then contact information for the uh, corresponding, corresponding author. Alrighty, this is for the professional paper and then the abstract page. This is just example, so I don't really write the abstract right here. Um, of course, the header is going to be here uh, because if you insert the header automatically, it's going to be in all of in all the pages that you're going to have in your paper. Um, so the abstract is going to be centered, and then this is in bold um 150 to 250 uh words single spaced and then followed by keywords so you're going to write down the keywords in here so keywords are the words keywords are the important words um that you use in your uh, research on your paper or your essay Alrighty. so this is the main body of the text Ah, uh, you are going to number the first page as page three because it is a continuation from the abstract, the previous page. Um, center and bold uh, the title. 
uh, it's going to be on top of your page, double spaced with all sections following each other without a break. So no break, no section break. Uh, identify all the sources that you use in your paper. Um, and you are going to uh, follow, you know, a particular format or if you use just tables or figures. Okay, so now the reference page. Ooh, this is going to make you guys tired because I don't want you to use the machine generating <laughs> kind of uh thing to that will make you spoil that will make it easier for you to um you know create list of references i don't suggest that you need to learn the hard way okay little by little word by word letter by letter so that you are going to know exactly how to create it right after that, up to you, you can use the machine, whatever machine available, whatever. So center the title references on top and it's going to be in bold, uh, double space, the reference entries, everything's going to be in double space, except for the abstract. Um, a flash left for the first line. Yeah, this is called uh, indentation, but I call it hanging hanging monkey that's what i call it, to make it easier <laughs> for me to remember so when you are in microsoft this is very technical guys so when you're in microsoft words then uh from the format you're going to choose the paragraph and then there is like a you know a little tiny box where you can choose whether indent or hanging or i don't remember the other word but you can choose over there and then choose the you know a particular number over there so automatically it's going to uh, be formatted we are going to work on that in class okay so this is very important alphabetical order always do that students always forget to do that and actually one thing that i really want to uh, talk about probably we can, we can go back for uh, students uh, when writing, uh, you know, when writing a, a paragraph, you hear that beeping? That's my electricity token. I need to buy a new one or I'm going to live in the dark. <laughs> okay, but it's beeping. It's really annoying. So this one, guys, the you see the abstract right here? And then how this one is unbeautiful. That's not grammatically correct. Unbeautiful, not beautiful, not beautiful. So you can see, you know, right? It's like not in a straight line, but that's the correct one. So have you ever seen like this one, like in a, you know, totally perfect straight line like this? This is what we call justified. So I see that a lot of students do that on purpose. So justify all the, you know, the paragraphs so that it will look beautiful. But that's not the goal of um, academic writing to look beautiful. So don't justify, um, you know, your paragraph, okay? It doesn't need to look beautiful. It's not important. It's not important in academic writing. <laughs> okay, where were we? Oh, references. Okay, uh, in references. So make sure that it is also not justified. So the drawback of justifying your paragraph is that sometimes the distance, it will mess the distance between one word to another word. So sometimes it's going to be like, you know, there's like a, you know, long gap and then short gap. And so it's not, it's not cool. Alrighty. So the re references, um, very basic. Uh, of course, you are going to start using last name, comma, first name, initial. That's the formula. That's the mantra. Okay. 
uh, and then capitalize only the first letter of the first word of a title and subtitle. Uh, so you can see the uh, the what is it the example right here. So you don't capitalize every single initial letter of every word. You are going to capitalize all major words in your in journal title. So uh, capitalize all major words in journal titles. So this is the, the journal titles, Journal of Economic and Management Perspectives. I think that's clear enough. Okay. Actually, I don't have to, I don't have to read it. Um, and then when you prepare your reference list, uh, you need to remember that APA is a complex system of citation. So when preparing the list, you need to follow the guide. Okay. So first um, you need to identify the type of sources. Um, if it is from books, from journals, from, uh, you know, YouTube videos, for example, from a, a conference, uh, conference proceedings, conference uh, PowerPoint slides or something like that, a web pitch uh, uh, website. Uh, and then find sample citation for this type of source. Then consult the APA manual. So you're not going to memorize anything, every single thing in the manual because that's just simply impossible. <laughs> simply not easy or impossible. I won't do that because it's like, you know, thousands of things to remember. So in another word, you need to mirror the sample. So after finding the sample of how to uh, cite a certain uh, source, then you're going to mirror. You need to make sure that it is exactly the same. When you see yourself in the mirror, it's going to be the same. You're not going to be able to deceive whatever you see in the mirror, right? So make sure that the entries are listed in alphabetical order, that the subsequent lines are indented or hanging, the hanging monkey. Okay, so this is in text citation. We are not going to memorize a lot of things. So um, you just make sure that you uh, provide the uh, name of the uh, author, the last name, and then the year, okay? So there are two kinds of basics cite in text citation. So the first one is called a parenthetical citation. The second one is called a narrative citation. Um, you are going to uh, read the manuals to make sure that you have no problem with this. And then the page numbers. This is how you write the page number, okay? In your citation, um, lower P, period, and then page number. Alrighty, very easy, right? Super, super easy. Okay, and then the quotation. So when quoting, you need to introduce the quotation with signal phrase. So this is the example. Okay, now uh, paraphrasing or summarizing. So uh, it also applies for both uh, parenthetical and uh, the narrative style. What you are going to do is put this into practice and consult the manual if you have problem. Right, so uh, this is signal words. You need to be creative in using signal words, so you are not going to use, you know, uh, one single word over and over and over again. So you need to be creative, um, you know, in alternating the uh, the use of the signal words. So this is for two or more works. Um, you are going to order them in the same way when you list them in the reference page. 
um, you are going to write the author's name, the year of publication, separated by semicolon. And now, ooh, it's more complicated. This is works with two authors. So if you cite the works from two writers, okay? So pay attention here how N and the symbol for N or ampersand is used. Uh, so for the headings, APA uses a system of five heading levels, and this is copied uh, directly from the APA manual, uh, seventh edition. Um, this one uh, illustrates how five level heading system looks like. Okay. Now, if you use tables in your essay, this is what you're going to do. Make sure that you uh, mention the source. So here, if you use uh, figures or um, picture or diagram in your essay, um, you need to see that it is also idealized. Okay, so this is the last slide that we have um, some additional resources. So I would suggest that you are going to uh, visit the uh, language center or the writing center or the library, uh, whichever is available in your campus if you have problems or questions related to uh, using the APA format in your writing uh, activities. And also, um, always consult the publication manual of the uh, APA. Right now, we are using the seventh edition. I would say that it is okay to use the sixth edition as long as you are consistent, okay? So don't mix between the sixth edition and the seventh edition, you know? That's not cool. Okay, and also visit the uh, APA website. That's the website over there. And of course, there is a super cool website from Purdue University. Um, it is called the Purdue uh, OWL. Um, you can visit the website. So you are not going to find only the APA uh, format related discussion, but you are going to be able to access uh, everything related to academic writing. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, so my last advice is since there are a lot of rules um, that we have to uh, learn uh, related to the ABA format application, I would say that it is nearly impossible to memorize everything. Okay, so the best strategy is um, going to be uh, uh, consulting the APA manual or visiting the websites that I have mentioned previously whenever you have uh, problems in applying the APA format um, in your um, academic writing activities, okay? So I'm going to see you on Thursday in class. We are going to practice using the APA format in writing. Please continue to stay safe wherever you are, take care of yourself and people around you. Don't forget to wash your hands. Always wear a mask, probably uh, use hand sanitizer. Bye-bye. Thank you.